This episode of our XML journey is about the ISO 8859 family of text file encodings. Now let's begin with a quick recap of the famous ASCII code which is sort of the granddaddy of all major current day encodings. Now, as we discussed, the ASCII code makes use of 7 bits, which gives us 128 possible combinations, right? Right, now let us note that 7 bits is kind of a weird number, because it ain't a power of 2, and also because we've mentioned several times now that our computers really like bytes to chew on, with a byte being of course an 8-bit sequence. So the fact that ASCII is a 7-bit code is really due to the hardware that it was designed for 50 years ago, right? Right. Now, also, let us remember that what the acronym ASCII expands to when spelled out is American Standard Code for Information Interchange, with the emphasis on English. But obviously, there are many, 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 many more languages used around the world, and therefore, it is also clear that ASCII lacks many characters of interest. For example, writing a German text, one would often prefer to use the a umlaut character instead of the AE workaround, and so on and so forth. Alright, so our modern day computer hardware it likes bytes much better than 7 bits anyway, and also the ASCII character set cardinality ranges definitely on the smaller side of the spectrum. So it really seems like one could kill two birds with one stone here by simply adding an eighth bit to the 7 bit ASCII code. Because this will double the number of possible combinations. In other words, this would give us another 128 characters. Hmm, doesn't sound too bad. But then again, if one thinks about the special characters that get used in the German, the Greek, the Polish language, well, one realizes that 256 characters can't really encompass all the characters used in those and other languages. So now of course, one could react to this by saying, well, let's add another byte, because that will allow us to encode a lot more characters, right? Right, but then again, one might also argue that most of the time people won't write a single text using more than half a dozen different languages. And it is precisely this argument which leads us to the two-part ISO 8859 solution for this encoding challenge. So the basic idea behind ISO 8859 is the following. The 7 ASCII bits serve as a basic part that is common to many languages like German, Swedish, Italian, etc. But the added one bit, i.e. the second part, is language specific. In other words, we can use the same code units, that is the same byte to encode different characters depending on the language context, meaning we use different encodings from the ISO 8859 code family for different languages. Right, now, as it turns out, the Latin 1 encoding, which we already encountered during our MySQL journey, 
It is just one such special kind of ISO 8859 encoding and it basically tries to support all characters which are commonly used in Western European languages like German and Swedish etc. Similarly, one can find an encoding which supports the central elements of Central European languages. And of course, this can be and is done for several more geographical regions and languages. Ok, now, so, those various ISO encodings, they basically follow the second line of reasoning previously laid out. But what about our first instinct and thought? That first idea to put together a single humongous character set which contains all known characters of all known languages and notation systems from all over this our blue planet and beyond. Good question. Let's find out in our next episode.